Hi friends, guess where I am today? I'm at City Lights Collectibles in San Diego coming to you with a fabulous unboxing of some new Dickens Village pieces. Um, City Lights is just the most wonderful place. They're, all their village products are starting to come in now, but we are going to be showing you some Dickens pieces today. And I'm so excited to share them with you. I am David Urban and I am a collector of Department 56 buildings and accessories and at home I have over 200 buildings and a Dickens display that's permanent. So this is very dear to my heart and I'm so excited to see which pieces might fit in here and there in my village. Um, might I have the first? Thank you. This is a very special piece and it is called Culpepper's Horology and it is um, a 40th anniversary piece because Dickens is celebrating 40 years in existence this year. And so they created this wonderful piece in honor of that. And it also has the feature of being a limited edition piece, which has a special designation on the bottom. And it means, um, I would say, kind of limited production. So it's a, it's a wonderful piece to add to your village. And I am going to be undoing the new packaging that is coming out this year that has actual lid and uh, the lip the lip will fold back into the box and there's a lovely feature called read my lips um, there's a saying on each flap that relates to the building and this one says time flies but remember you're the pilot um, this is Culpepper's and I will be taking it right out directly in the wonderful new foam that is flake free and so clean, which is a lovely feature. And then let me just close it back up here. And folks, we will be taking off the lid and I will be taking it right out of the back box and showing it to you. Now it also has a little accessory piece. It's a little, a little um, advertising sign that will um, attach to the building as well and let me also plug it in for you thank you and let's turn on the light and i'm going to slip this in stretch it out so now how's that looking i'll make it just in its little groove so the history behind this wonderful building Besides its 40th anniversary and the, and the connection that it has to the stone of the anniversary, which is the ruby, is that this was a former herbalist shop. And herbal medicine and folk, uh, folk medicine was very important to the Victorian folks and even earlier because they just did not have a lot of scientific knowledge to help them with illnesses and discomfort. So, um, there's a gentleman named Thomas Culpepper, and he, in um, the 1500s, released a publication called The Complete Herbal. It's similar to something like this, and it's been in production that many years, and it's still available. So it's got a lot of um, remedies and home cures. So that's where the association with Culpeppers can be made, and now the new owner has decided to keep the name, but he's a watchmaker. And he has chosen to keep a lot of the coloring of the building, representing some of the items that used to be at the herbalist, which because it was a specialist in spices and, and herbs. And so the, this is a reference to the black pepper that he sold. And also he wanted to have people come in and see his new version of, of like a pink peppercorn because he's also carried um, little tiny rubies that were um, they were mined and they were called, it was called pelleting, pelleting the little ruby stones so they'd be very tiny and then they would go into the, the workings of watches and clocks. So, um, for Culpepper's uh, accessory, which is right here, we have the gentleman proprietor who is looking at a beautiful ruby in his hand and deciding, should he keep it to be pelleted? And shrunk down in size or should he oh it's beautiful i don't know if you can see the shine on that 
but um, he's just trying to decide which use it for jewelry or have it be in the, in the uh, clockworks. And then I want to show you this wonderful little sign. It will attach right to the opening here. I say confidently. And then this is like a wonderful um, clock with the crystal in the center. That's the ruby and it will hang here. And so attractive. So these are actual crystals that um, they're carrying and they're using in the, um, in the sign and in his hand. So this um, beautiful watchmaker building is, is Culpepper's. So I'm going to move it off now. Thank you very much. Oh, that is so cool. That little crystal is just wonderful. Thank you. And next, oh my gosh, thank you. Oh. Now, in um, the Dickens series, there are some new buildings that are little market stalls. And this is the third installation, the third piece in the series. And it's um, sort of like, like the German markets where they would set up specialty items just for, um, for that little booth. And this one is Ava's Plum Pudding. Now, Plum Pudding was a big deal in Victorian England. They always served it flaming flaming brandy around it for their for their dessert at the Christmas dinner. And so this is a wonderful thing that a lot of people would be gathering for their homes, for their dinner. And uh, Ava is the proprietor of this particular booth. And let's see, here we come. Now, this is a, a lighted piece as well. So it's going to have a, um, an adapter feature as well as the battery pack. Thing. But um, Ava is here, and let us see what a charming piece this is. I'm going to turn off this light for a moment. These are so charming. And when I get it hooked up, you can see how sweet this, this little market booth is, and what a wonderful addition it is to the village's for Christmas time. Now I'll show you Ava who is selling them today and every day leading up to Christmas. The 12 days of Christmas were a, a big part of Victorian Christmas celebrations and it started on Christmas Day and went all the way to January 6th and they used to do something special every night and really stretch out the season. So there was a lot of plum puddings to be had. She is carrying one of the beautiful, fancy desserts, plum pudding, and here she is offering a wonderful traditional dessert for the season. So I would think this would fit in just perfectly with the other, um, with the other markets. Now, Um, traditionally, I wanted to mention that the plum pudding itself usually has 13 ingredients, which is a reference to uh, the Christ child and his later apostles. Or you could reference the 12 days of Christmas and the baby. So that's a fun fact for um, you collectors of, of Dickens Village. So let me unplug this. And here's the other one. Thank you. Oh, here is a fabulous piece. This is another gorgeous building. And this is Kingsford Rug Merchant. Now, you know how cold it is in England. And everything that they could do in their homes to warm it up was very special and important. And so a rug merchant would be selling things to really warm up everyone's home. Take the chill away. Um, sometimes, I mean, even in the old castles, they had to hang tapestries and things on the wall because it was so damp and cold. 
But here we have a wonderful merchant. Um, oops, I want to. Um, I want to give its little this little advertising sign as well to show you. And oh, it has some separate um, lamps that attach as well. <laughs> so these, you know, these are so charming and so appropriate for the buildings and the merchants. But the rug, Geeler Kingsford, is got so much. Now it comes out sideways, but the front door is here. A little tricky there. And the lanterns will hang on two spots. They go over the doors. And there's little hooks. And without my reading glasses, I will try oop, to hang it on. There you go. You know how it is with tiny little objects. Getting the right side of threading a needle. Now I may have to. Oh, look. There's one. And the other one is right on the other side here for y'all. <laughs> and you have to almost go upside down to make that connection because the hook is bent there. Oop, so they stay. Hello. And I may skip this one. Oops. Nope. Oh, I'll bring it all the way around. And I think I know. Anyway, you get the idea. And the village sign is so charming. It's attached to itself, but it will go over the front door area and be hanging right there. And the rugs are just so wonderful. They're actually made of, of, of canvas and so that they have a very lifelike texture. This one kind of moves so people can come up and examine it in you know, the streets. And it's just got so many wonderful details, the beautiful windows. Kingsford Rug Merchants. And then its accessory piece is, I think, one of the uh, delivery people. And he's got a smaller version of a rug called the Drugget. And they were smaller pieces of, um, of, of like a throw rug where they would put over the most heavily, heavily trafficked areas so that it would preserve the precious rug underneath. So he's carrying a small version of Victorian throw rug called the Drugget. Isn't that amazing? And it, uh, again, it feels like it's a nice cloth, like a cloth, has a wonderful texture. Oh, this is the, oh yeah, this is the, the lantern that I could not attach without my glasses. Ah, oh, just beautiful. Oh, here's another rug that's hanging off the, the side of the building. Oh, no, no, this is just so detailed. Well, you know that um, Tom Bates, who is the artist that creates all the Dickens buildings, just does such a fantastic job. He is a genius, and we are so lucky that he is working on these pieces because he creates just magic pieces, and I um, appreciate their efforts so much. Okay, let's move on to another um, small accessory piece. This is really fun. This is a cool, cool series that has just come out in the last few seasons. It's um, a London Zoo. And the London Zoo was created, if I could just, oh, 1828. The London Zoo was created. It was created as a scientific um, ex, uh, gathering of animals. And did you know that the Tower of London used to have a zoo in it? It's hard to imagine in that scary place that they were taking care of animals, but those animals were eventually moved over to the, the new London Zoo. And it was just for research and science to begin with, but then in 1840, they opened up to the public. And this piece is a, an aviary and um, it's so charming because it lights up as well. It's kind of like the same size as a market booth. And it has um, the ability to light up. And it is just so charming. I don't know about you, but I adore the screen that they've chosen as a, as a um, component of 
the gates and the fences that are available, but this is amazing. There are actually beautiful colored birds in this piece. And let me just pop it down here and turn it on for you all. This is another adapter feature. And, and did it come on? Well, I can't tell. I don't, I don't know that it did. Let's see if I just try another one. Because it is amazing. Well, look at that. Beautiful detail. Octagonal in shape with windows that are looking in on the birds. Oh, my gosh. And then its accessory piece is a wonderful little lady who's holding a bird. And the birds apparently in Victorian England were a symbol of um, the maternal and um, some of the other qualities that she's representing, beauty and grace. Um, so its title is, she's a lovely lovebird. And you're left, it's left up to your own imagination whether that refers to the bird or <laughs> the lady. But she's got a gorgeous mint green gown on and she is holding a precious little bird. Oh my gosh, that is just makes the most wonderful set. That is well done and so charming. Let me just pop this up. So this um, coordinates with some of the other zoo pieces that are available that you'll see and um, this one is just so charming, especially engaging with, with the see-through quality that the glass around provides. Really beautiful. So well done. And now, I think in keeping with this piece is another zoo uh, accessory. No, sorry, this lights up. This is the giraffe cage which is so charming. And apparently there's a way to tell the age of the giraffe in this box because of what it's being fed by its keeper. And this is a giraffe that's six months or younger because that's, or, I mean, or older because that's when they can digest their main diet, which is romaine lettuce. So here we come, this beautiful piece. Oh my gosh, just incredible. That gorgeous green trim again, which is kind of a theme of the buildings for the zoo. Um, this is the giraffe house that the folks can stroll by and then they will watch the feeder offering this little guy some romaine. Who knew? Okay, Mr. Keeper, Mr. Zookeeper. It's up back there. It doesn't look like I have a photo of the other beautiful building. Here he is. And he is going to be able to reach right up to that tall neck and offer some, some lunch to their adorable giraffe. Isn't that fantastic? Beautiful thatched roof, tan colored brick, the little fountain on the side for access for the water that they'll drink. It's just a wonderfully charming piece now, I could light it up for you all with, um, actually, this one gets its own uh, light bulb. Now this is, now this light bulb is turning on. Hmm, I wonder if we lost some power here. Well, that's interesting. Did I step on the cord and pull it out? I don't know. Well, I'm very sorry. 
that our light isn't lighting up at the moment, and I think it's all, it should be okay. I'm just, well, anyway, you get the, you get the um, idea. The, um, oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> Look at, we have light, and that's probably what happens with the um, other piece. And I'm going to now be able to show you this one in its full glory. And I'm sure the, the stall is lit up and the light is shining through. Oh yes, oh, that is so wonderful. The neck of the giraffe you can see is getting a little uplighting and it is just a wonderfully charming piece. And uh, a great addition if you're doing the London Zoo. Now I have two more pieces to share with you and they are uh, fabulous accessories that are new this year. One is a tribute to the Queens of England. And even though um, we just, you know, recently lost Queen Elizabeth, um, since she wasn't around in the Victorian time, they, we have this wonderful tribute to Queen Victoria herself, which is the namesake of the entire period. And when um, we have our, our, our main setting of the Dickens Village. So she's on a gorgeous pedestal and would look fantastic on a street corner. She's got a wonderful patina of age. So this is the gorgeous and stately Queen Victoria statue that will fit in and look so amazing in, in the, your Dickens Village and mine. And then lastly, we have this wonderful accessory that's been designed um, to fit in without a specific building it has to be associated with it's just a family and friends kind of piece where they're um, doing wonderful activities that could be on any street corner and in front of any building in any park at the zoo and i'll take them up for you there's three pieces here a darling little lady who's sweeping the streets and keeping things tidy then we have this other gentleman who is got he has got it looks like um a dove or a duck or some sort of um some sort of a um bird and then this one is the the most fun piece lab jumping over a little snow drift and he's on a wire so it can have some movement there he wiggles around let me just back up clean here and place these guys together and he's having the most fun so can you imagine how charming at least one set of these would look in your village if not more because they're just so charming uh this has been so much fun this is the my first time seeing them in person. I've seen the catalog and I've seen the advertisements coming out for the releases, but now actually seeing them in person has been such a treat. I thank you for joining me. And I want to remind you that if you're needing to contact us here, please go to the website. It's available 24 seven. It's citylightscollectibles.com or you could always call the 800 number. It's 800-262-5335, and they will be happy to help you. All the things are coming in now, so get ready. Your village is coming up. Christmas is seven months away, but I know you're gonna want these things as soon as you can to start planning out your, your gorgeous displays. So thank you for being with me today, and hopefully we'll see you soon for some new unboxings.